Yesterday, when discussing the full release of AMD Fluid Motion Frames, a driver level frame generation, which again is not the same thing as FSR 3, which requires integration into a game, uh, when I discussed in that video talking about the pros and cons of driver level frame generation, uh, it seemed like I got some pushback in the comments where a lot of people were saying they had a much more positive opinion of the technology than what I did, uh, what, what I was saying had been my experience. Now, a lot of people were also saying that most of my testing had been on the preview drivers and now it's a full release and it's an improved experience. So what we're doing in this video is I am trying out the full release version of AMD Fluid Motion Frames in a variety of games, some with a mouse, some with a controller. Uh, I'll look at something that's like engine cap to 60 FPS, see if that kind of experience helps. We'll try out different base frame rates. We'll also try at least one game that has an actual FSR 3 implementation to compare my experience using an integration of FSR 3 versus using the driver level fluid motion frames and there's a few really important things to know while we were uh, thinking through this video right okay number one everyone's perception of things like latency and image quality artifacts motion fluidity things like that those are all personal perceptions which means that your opinion could be different than mine and that's okay and the cool thing is if you have an amd 6000 or 7000 series gpu you can try this out by downloading the latest full release drivers and kicking on fluid motion frames in pretty much any dx11 or dx12 game i am so excited that we have that ability now that is awesome Awesome. And if you have a compatible graphics card, try it out and see what your experience is. Because I can tell you what my experience is like, but I can't tell you what your experience is like. And it's if you like it better than me, that's awesome. That means you got a new tool uh, and maybe I'll be blown away by this full implementation of it. We'll have to see. Now, there's a, another really important note when you're watching a video like this. There is absolutely no way to accurately convey a variable refresh rate experience in a YouTube video. Video. YouTube videos are locked to 60 frames per second, but the gameplay that we will be recording is not locked to 60 frames per second. Um, there's a lot of ways I could try to capture this, but none of them are perfect. I've found in the past when, uh, when uh, checking out technologies like this that the best option I have is to film my screen with a camera using the highest refresh rate I have available to me, which is 120 frames per second. However, the YouTube video will still be crushed down to 60 and the gameplay we're filming is not going to be locked to 120 frames per second anyway. And even if it was, it wouldn't necessarily match the shutter speed of the camera you guys kind of get the idea. So in addition to filming the screen, I will be discussing what I am seeing. I will try to point it out as best as I can. But um, again, some of this just unfortunately kind of has to be a, trust me, bro, I'm telling you how I'm experiencing it and I'm showing you as best as I can. But again, try experiencing this for yourself. There's also no way I can try out every game situation where this might be viable. So again, try it out for yourself. Now, a couple other important things to note when you're using this technology. It does not, the driver level frame generation does not show up on a normal uh, third party FPS counter overlay like MSI Afterburner, the one built into Steam or all sorts of them. Uh, you have to use AMD's own software overlay. And the awesome thing is that overlay is really good. And it also even reports the, the latency, the additional latency being added from this driver level frame generation. It also reports micro stutter rate, which can spike when this technology kind of gives up. I've talked about this technology a lot in previous videos, but the idea is that a driver level implementation of frame generation doesn't have access to game motion vectors the way a full implementation of something like FSR 3 or DLSS 3 frame generation does, which means the interpolated frames are generally both of lower quality, but also um, just it can sometimes get to the point where the, the technology intentionally chooses not to interpolate a frame uh, because it, it, there's too much of a difference between frames. The, the, the AMD documentation says during fast motion, it may choose to disable the frame generation. And that's been one of my biggest issues with it when I tested on the preview drivers because I uh, the whole point to me of a motion smoothing technology, which is what this is, right? This is a motion smoothing technology. It doesn't make your game more responsive the way normal high frame rates would. It makes the game the gameplay hopefully looks 
smoother in motion on a high refresh rate display. So, um, with that in mind, I am, you know, if there are points where it micro stutters because it chooses not to interpolate a frame, that's a significant disruption to the consistency of the frame pacing, which is kind of the whole, to me, the whole point of frame generation technologies. Again, your experience could be different. Uh, so we'll be looking out for that as I try out this full release version. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that AMD has said that this is best used when generating frames from at least a 60 FPS baseline before you have frame generation enabled. And I will try it out in this video at a variety of base frame rates. Uh, I also believe the technology is not compatible with V-Sync, so you'd want to make sure that you're staying under your monitor's maximum refresh rate to uh, avoid f a screen tearing. So I'll be trying it out on my 165 hertz display, uh, which is my highest refresh rate display to help us stay within the, uh, you know, underneath the monitor's max refresh rate. Let's go ahead and start out in a game that has both FSR3 and AFMF so we can compare them. Uh, then we'll try out a variety of other games and I'll give you some final thoughts at the end. All right, the first thing we're going to look at is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, because then we can actually do a head-to-head -head of FSR 3 versus AFMF at the driver level. So here we are on the 7900 XTX. We're at uh, ultra settings, but I've turned off motion blur. And we're at the native resolution. I'm in FSR 3 pathway with no scaling so that we can turn on frame generation. And it looks like our base frame rate is a little under 60 at this point. Looks like we're at 57 standing still in motion. That could possibly dip a little bit. We're kind of in the mid 50s. Now, first, uh, let's get an idea. Again, what you see will not be identical to me because you're not, uh, you know, you're watching a 60 FPS YouTube video. But as you pan the camera, there are gaps between frames, right? There's definitely gaps uh, th that are noticeable on camera panning. Now, if I turn on an actual FSR3 implementation, we'll go ahead and see what that looks like. So, with that implemented, I can tell that it is much smoother in motion. However, if you look right here, under this little uh, blurred out area, you can see that those areas are not updating because the game... See, now we don't have that issue now that it faded away. If I bring that back... Um, you can tell the issue with FSR3 in this game, which is that the HUD elements are not uh, responding to it. That's intentional, so you don't get blurring. Uh, but anyway, the actual camera pan on the areas of the screen at which it applies looks very smooth here. Now, let's go ahead and uh, turn FSR3 off. And then we'll try it uh, out doing the same idea, but with the driver level AFMF. So again, here's with both, both frame generation techniques off. Now we're going to go into the driver and we are going to turn on AMD Fluid Motion Frames. Should uh, indicate active and that uh, anti-lag is also kicked on to help reduce latency. Now you can see that standing still our, our frame rate has gone up over 100. Now in motion, in slow motion I will say it still looks more jittery and you can actually watch the frame rate counter. It's going to give up. Uh, so when there's too large of a difference between frames in fast movement, AFMF kind of gives up in a way that FSR3 did not. And you can notice that that's uh, getting our micro stutter rate to spike and um, our overall frame rate dips and there's frame, frame time spikes. Now, I will say, uh, I, I also want to try this out. So, so now we don't have that uh, HUD element issue that we did before because it's unaware of what is or is not a HUD element. And honestly, that looks fine. So I almost wonder uh, what if they actually didn't separate those out in the FSR3 implementation, how that would look. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, get a higher base frame rate because the uh, AFMF is recommended at a minimum of 60 FPS uh, from your base. So if we go down to the high settings, I think we should be able to get a higher base frame rate before the frame generation is active. We'll go ahead and turn frame generation off so that we can uh, get that baseline. So now we're at, we're, now we're in the 70s, right? So it are, the thing is now my performance is already pretty good with no upscaling, so I'm not sure I really need any frame generation. But let's go ahead and try out AFMF again uh, with that enabled. Let's go ahead and check. So our frame rate number does go up. And now it doesn't give up so easily, but it did still give up there. See, it's, 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 it's dropping down to 60. 
Now, I understand that normal gameplay isn't necessarily going to be just turning your camera screen back and forth. So let's try running around there. We got a, got a bit of a stutter spike. Okay, it looks like it disabled for a second and it kind of re-enabled. Uh, watch the frame, frame rate numbers and the, the micro stutter. So again, it, it feels a little stuttery if I camera pan too far, because I think, again, it kind of gives up. And again, our base frame rates now are pretty good. So um, yeah, it, that was a little choppy when I kind of went up and then down, right? Because there's a lot of difference between frames. So I've got to say, again, I'm not super impressed with the, uh, with the result here, especially when compared to the uh, game in-game in implementation. So if we go to FSR3 back on, uh, so this is the actual in-game, and that looks smooth. I I'm getting a much smoother camera pan, and uh, again, it doesn't give up in motion. It does have the HUD element issue where, uh, again, it instead of blurring the HUD element, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't use it, so that looks a little bit out of sync right there. But again, I can actually move around, and I don't get those little juddery dips in the frame generation to anywhere near the degree we saw um, with AFMF uh, enabled. So I've got to say, so far, I, I don't love it here uh, with AFMF compared to an FSR3 implementation. And really, honestly, I think once I'm already hitting FPS in those 70s range, I'd rather keep it consistent than get those stutters back down. But let's check out some other games. All right, I've now started up Plague Tale Requiem, which is a slow-paced game, and I have a controller to play it, because I've noticed latency issues and things like that, and you don't tend to move the mouse as quickly as you, uh, I mean, the controller as quickly as you move a mouse. This currently has no frame generation enabled. We are at uh, the ultra preset, other than I have disabled motion blur again to help us see what's happening here in these frames. And then uh, basically it looks like in this scene we're around 80 FPS, so we are well above the recommended baseline. So here's the idea of what this looks like uh, without any type of frame generation enabled. Now this game has DLSS 3 frame generation, but no, uh, no FSR 3, so that wouldn't be an option anyway. Uh, but we'll go over here to, uh, it's hard to see underneath the gaming tab here. And then fluid motion frames, let's go ahead and kick it on. So fluid motion frames enabled. Let's, um, let's see, does it not kick on anti lag? Let's try that out as well. Okay, so we are now doubling our frame rate to around 150. We're near the monitor's cap. And it's, um, hmm. I don't like the quality of it on the foliage. I'm not sure how much this will pick up in the camera, but I don't think the foliage looks great on a camera pan. Now let me try some actual uh, just kind of movement. Again, this is pretty slow paced. So in this style of movement, I don't notice any issues at all. Um, but as I you know start actually running and panning the camera, yeah, on the camera pans, something, it just feels off, almost like screen tearing, although it's not. I, I, I really don't know how much uh, this picks up in the camera. Let me go ahead and turn frame gen off just to make sure it's not just the game rather than the frame generation. So we'll, we'll kick that off. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I just feel like it's mo more coherent um, with, with the AFMF turned off. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Again, we're at high enough frame rates they don't really have too much of a problem anyway. Let's go ahead and kick it on one more time. Because again, the big question is, uh, would I rather play the game with it on or with it off? So we've got it back on again. And I mean, it's not terrible, but guys, I, I, I promise you the the foliage looks really weirdly jittery in motion here. It is extremely distracting to me on a camera pan. Um, let me see if I can try to get just a smooth camera pan going here. And I don't know how much this will pick up through YouTube and slowing down the frame rates and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, I find that a little bit distracting. And since we were already at a pretty high base frame rate anyway, um, I think I would, based on this limited testing, yeah, this just is less distracting to me and we're already at a pretty high frame rate. So I think I would just stay stay at this. 
Um, now, the other possibility is we could make the uh, make our frame rate lower, so we might want to actually have more help um, by turning on ray tracing in this game. I didn't have that on yet. So let's kick on ray traced shadows. And I don't think we need to restart the game. Let's see what happens. So yeah, with ray traced shadows kicking in, our frame rate certainly tanks. Uh, so now we're down at like 37 frames per second. So now this just generally looks pretty bad, <laughs> okay? Um, but that's without frame generation, so can it help us from a low frame rate? Which again is not how this is recommended. AMD clearly says you want to have a minimum of 60 FPS to kick this on, but we'll go ahead and try it out. Yeah, it, it again, this says 60 FPS now, but look at this camera pan that looks just really, really bad. So it's a 60 number, but it's not a 60 FPS gaming experience. It just really, really isn't. So um, I don't know what to tell you guys other than I don't think I like it in this game as well, even though it is fairly slow paced and I'm on a controller. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, maybe try one or two more. Let's take a look at Cyberpunk. So again, on the 7900 XTX, uh, if I want to play with ray tracing enabled on a 3440x1440p 1440 monitor with no upscaling, um, basically I went to the ultra preset, but then I'm like, okay, what if we want to kick on ray traced reflections? So that now gets us our performance fairly borderline here, right? We're about 57 frames per second, 58, so we're pretty close to that 60 number. And right now there's no frame generation enabled. And with uh, motion blur turned off, I definitely see gaps between frames as I, as I turn and things like that. So uh, it is what it is. It's certainly playable, but you might want a little more performance, right? So that's where we will go ahead and kick on our AFMF and see what we think. So kicking on AFMF, uh, including uh, anti-lag, and here we go. So with that on, we can now see standing still, our frame rate number has doubled. So we're at 110 now. Let's go ahead and run around and see what we think. So I can already tell that as I turn, again, you'll see the micro stutter rate spikes and the frame rate number goes down while we're turning, which means I just don't feel like it's really smoothing out my camera motion when I'm playing the game. I mean, if I'm going, if I'm kind of just standing hill here sort of still, it's not that big of a deal, but I don't think turning a 90 degrees is an unreasonable thing to expect to be able to do uh, without getting micro stutters, but that seems to be um, what we are getting here. Now again, the base frame rate was a bit lower than recommended, so we will try out uh, one more thing, which is let's actually boost our frame rate first by upscaling. So this time I'm going to try out turning on resolution scaling to FSR quality. Uh, so now with no frame generation, it is looking like we are at about 87, 90 frames per second. So I can tell you right now, I could, I could just play like this. I don't really need frame generation. Um, you know, the FSR quality at 1440p is certainly usable. There's a few little, you know, stability things in the background if you, if you look at it, but it's not bad at all, right? So we could just definitely play the game like this, ultra with RT reflections, but let's see if our experience gets improved by turning on fluid motion frames, because that is the question. Would it be even better using this feature? Okay, uh, so we are now very close to my monitor's max refresh rate of 165. Uh, and this this is not compatible with VSync, so um, if we go over that, we could get some screen tearing. But it looks like we're mostly staying within that window. Okay, from this high of a base frame rate, this doesn't seem too bad. I think on the quick camera pans, you still do get it to micro stutter a little bit, um, but it's not. Ter See, I, I, it, it, look, right there, it just kind of gets choppy, though, when I do turn quickly. Now, granted, you're not going to be doing that all the time, and everybody has their own preferences, but for me, when I'm playing a game, it's the, it's the consistency of the frame rate that's important, and if I get uh, micro stutters, that's kind of, a, uh, kind of an issue, I guess. Uh, so, I don't know, guys. I'm, let me try it again with it turned off and see which one I am preferring. Uh, so far at 
coming from this base frame rate, I think um, has been my best experience with it so far. This is with it off. And let me try, uh, again, it's, it's, it's still a very good experience. I'm not getting the micro stutter and it's consistent experience. Uh, sorry, let's kick it back on again. All right, this is, um, again, so far out of the testing I've done, this is the best experience I've had with it, is starting from a base frame rate in kind of the mid, mid 80s to 90 and running around the street area. It, it gets the occasional micro stutter, but it's not too egregious. I still think I might personally prefer to play with it off since we already had such a uh, high base frame rate. But in this limited amount of testing, this doesn't seem uh, too terrible or anything. I could see someone maybe choosing to use this, even if I would not personally. Let's try at least one more game. All right, my last thought for something to test out is what about a game that is locked to 60 FPS by the game? I think there are mods for this, but Elden Ring, uh, without mods, I think is still locked to 60 FPS on PC. It also seems to not support ultra wide. I haven't tried it on ultra wide yet. Apparently that's the case and my message was appraised, cool. Anyway, we're locked to 60 frames per second despite the fact that our GPU could do better. So perhaps this is a good situation. Again, we're at 3440 by 1440p. I'm at max preset uh, with motion blur off, although I did set the ray tracing to medium so that we would be able to hit our 60 FPS cap. Anyway, so we're getting a feel for the game without any sort of frame generation. And let's go ahead and kick frame generation on since this might be one of the only ways to push past 60 frames per second in a game that engine locks to 60. Uh, I'm gonna give it a second to settle in. I feel like I'm getting a bit of screen tearing. I don't know if that's picking up in the camera, but yeah, I think there's a bit of screen tearing on the camera pans. And again, I don't think the foliage looks great. Are, are we seeing the, the jittery tearing going on in the foliage here? screen tearing on this as th this section of the screen kind of shaky down the middle there now that is just doing a camera pan rather rather than you know just kind of running around playing so yeah I'm, I'm getting that that screen tearing and again it kind of gave up right <laughs> uh for a second perhaps that was just not interacting well with uh you know elden ring is prone to stutter a bit but yeah it seems like on turning quickly the frame generation is still kicking uh, itself off a little bit. Uh, what if we turn ray tracing down a bit more just to take a little bit of burden, uh, additional burden off of the GPU? Uh, so we'll go down to low settings. Perhaps that'll settle things down a little bit. GPU utilization appears to only be around 80%. So I, I, I don't think it's the GPU dipping below it. I, I'm still seeing some screen tearing here. so. Anyway, it's looking like I don't think this would be my preferred way to play this game either. I am curious what you guys think. Let me pop out for a few final thoughts. All right, so some final thoughts. I mean, first of all, I'm really happy we have this feature and I do hope it continues to improve. I also really like to see when AMD pushes ahead of NVIDIA in certain things. NVIDIA certainly had the first frame generation technology uh, in games out there with DLSS 3 frame generation, uh, but now AMD has not only implemented their FSR 3 frame generation, but providing a driver level version for people who do want to use that is certainly cool. And it is a step forward and I'm interested to see if NVIDIA responds, uh, you know, with, with anything similar. However, what is my actual take on using the technology? And again, as I said in the video, everyone's perception of motion fluidity, image quality artifacts, uh, you know, micro stutters and um, uh, system latency, all of that, everybody's perception is different. So, I can tell you how I feel about this and you could feel very differently and that's okay. And I'm really happy if a bunch of you uh, like this technology and find it's improving your gameplay experience for free. That is awesome. However, in the testing you saw in this video, and I also did more off camera cause you know, my camera, you know, has only so much, you know, storage space and battery life and all of that. Uh, but I did play around with it a bit more as well. And overall, 
I have not found a situation where I feel like it is just a clearly better experience to turn AFMF on than to just play with it off and adjust settings to achieve the frame rate I would uh, otherwise. When comparing it to FSR 3, which remember, AFMF and FSR 3 are not the same thing. So when we look at the Avatar Frontiers of Pandora FSR 3 implementation, I found that to be a much better experience than AFMF. It was consistent. It did not give up <laughs> when, when uh, you know I turned the camera at reasonable speeds for gameplay uh, from a decent base frame rate. Um, so it didn't get those little micro stutters and generally the image quality of the generated frames was better. So, um, the direct competition versus FSR 3, I didn't feel good about and I didn't like the implementation. Uh, I mean, I didn't like how it felt in that game. Out of all the games I tested, the only experience where I felt kind of borderline, where it was almost improving the experience, although I think I still slightly prefer keeping it off, was in Cyberpunk when I kicked on the ray trace reflections and FSR quality and already had a base frame rate uh, between 80 and 90 FPS in the scene. And then I kicked on the, the, the AFMF to get the frame rate hitting near my monitor's max refresh rate, but right under it, uh, you know, in that 150 to 160 range. That was the best experience I had with it. The higher the frame rate, the less gap there is between frames. So I think the um, having the the not having access to the game data, motion vectors, and things like that is uh, easier for it to deal with in high high refresh rate experience situations. Um, so the quality of the generated frames seemed better, and it seemed to give up less frequently. Uh, so that being said, though, it did still get the occasional additional micro stutter that I wasn't experiencing with it turned off. And again, for me, it's the consistency of the frame pacing that is most important uh, when looking at a motion fluidity boosting technology. And because this isn't completely consistent and it does introduce those extra little stuttering situations when you are camera panning. Um, it, that, that never seemed to fully go away from me in any of the tests. And so, in its current state, I would leave it off in the, all the games that I have tested. However, I certainly can't test every game. So I would love to hear in the comments section if you are finding situations uh, where you're finding this technology uh, of benefit, you think it's a better experience with it on versus it off. And what I highly recommend people do when you're testing this is actually probably have the, the um, frame rate counter off. Like maybe, maybe turn it on quickly to verify the generated frames are uh, happening. But honestly, you should be able to tell they're happening just by turning it on, right? In other words, um, I think it's important to um, uh, make sure you're not just seeing a number go up and assuming that makes the situation better, right? Because normally we associate a higher frame rate number with a better experience. But that's not necessarily the case with frame generation technologies. And that's true of FSR 3 and DLSS 3 as well. There are definitely games that have a full game implementation that I still prefer to leave it off. Uh, for example, I was playing Alan Wake 2 recently and I kept DLSS 3 frame generation turned off because I did not like how it uh, made the, the motion in dark scenes with the flashlight look. Um, felt like there was too much uh, image quality issues there. So. Again, there, everybody will experience this differently. Some games, maybe you'll find ones where, where it does improve your experience. Hopefully you guys found my thoughts on the situation useful and or interesting. And a huge thank you to channel members who have clicked the join button to directly support the channel financially. That is a, a huge help and motivation to me, uh, you know, producing the videos and all that, knowing you guys value the content. However, I totally understand that not, re not everybody's in a financial position to do that. So if you're not, that is totally fine. Huge thank you to just viewers subscribers, all of that, and I hope everyone has an excellent day.